five, four, three, two, one. Hello everybody, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy. Welcome to the British and Irish Military Records Study Group. Uh, we've got Claire Brissenbanks, we've got some great new information that's come to us directly from Audrey uh, Collins who works at the National Archives and Cousin Russ is here as usual to bring in your comments. I see we've got three viewers at the moment. Just a reminder, yes, we're clapping our hands. We're so happy to see you. A couple of things are going to happen today. This is our closing session, our final session in this series and so Cousin Russ gets to choose He's going to just blindly point his mouse to somebody on the viewers list. I'm going to give away this book. Claire, would you talk to us about the work that Mark Herber, H-E-R-B-E-R, -E -E has done in his Ancestral Trails book? Yeah, this is the fourth edition, second edition of this book. Uh, Mark has just done a tremendous amount of research uh, compiling this. There is you, An individual who has this cannot go wrong doing their genealogical research. In fact, ICAP Gen, which is accrediting uh, the accreditation, one of the yeah. accreditation uh, recommends that we use this for England. When people take classes at BYU, um, Provo, BYU, Idaho, and their focus is for England, this is the book. All right, so we're thinking that that will help somebody uh, out there. So um, stay tuned, we'll see who wins. Oh, thank you for bringing this up, Claire. Um, I'm ICAP Jen, and Cousin Russ has just shared the link with everybody. Um, this is Claire's page over uh, at ICAP Jen. She is accredited for research in England, the United States, Mountain West region. But I also know that you have a lot of Scotland expertise in Australia. They've they've had you speak in both countries. You're internationally known and. Besides that, you're my friend, and that's what counts. <laughs> the friend pot's the best. <laughs> I know, that's true. All right, so folks, Cousin Russ is also going to share with you the link to our British and Irish Military Records Google Sheet. It's like Microsoft Excel. And I recognize everybody here on the list, so I know that you know the drill. Uh, every uh, session, we are adding new things. I'm not. Claire and Audrey are. Uh, <laughs> and uh, remember to download. Now, Claire, will you? I don't know if you're going to have more to add after this session. I think you've got it pretty well intact. I do. Unless somebody adds us a link or Audrey says just stick this in, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty good to go. All right. So when I make the announcement that the um that this archived version is available, I'll also let folks know about this worksheet because basically this is our syllabus. Uh, these are the links that we've used. There's the link to the National Archives guide. Do you guys like my new mouse pointer? It's red, and I'm hoping it shows up better. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It's good. Well, thanks to Chris Wright from Australia for <laughs> sending it to me. And then uh, we've got some special stuff to talk about. Do you, um, this is from the National Archives. But all of these links, titles of record groups and hyperlinks, have to do with what's available online. And we know... That's still just a drop in the bucket compared to what's uh, available. Um, there's the genealogist, Find My Past. And by the way, Find My Past is doing their military records for free through the 4th of July in honor of uh, the U.S. celebration of the 4th of July. So, Claire, um, what shall we do first? Well, you know, you asked me to do a couple of things right before we ended. The first yes. one was the London Blitz map. Oh, yes. So okay. it's right there. If you could go to the National Archives page. Okay, I am going to the National Archives page. Okay. okay. Pass the red marks and go to the first blue Oh, mark. yes. Okay. So let's this go check that out. Okay, it's on the, line 31. Yep, go to line 31. And let's look okay. at that. You asked about this. This was fabulous. It's amazing, this map. Yeah. I was, like, blown away. I was in tears Scroll down. when I watched it. it. Yeah. Here it is. So Scroll we are little, zoomed yeah. in. Yep. You can you can it's an interactive map. You can make it bigger or smaller. I was just blown away. Look at that. All of the I mean the whole area just was totally blitzed. Yes. 
So if you have somebody during World War II and you know their address because of, um, I don't know why you'd know their address, but if you did know their address, I mean, when you look, there's hardly a block that went by that wasn't uh, bombed. I don't know oh, how London I ever don't, survived. No, I don't know how they survived either. And we have we have family that live there now. And, I mean, I was able to find that. Uh, um, I looked to see where they are, and they're right outside in the outskirts of London. But you'd never recognize. In other words, today, whatever they've done up till this point has, you know, well and truly doesn't look like what that does. I know. Well, when you th when you're thinking about this and how how short the distance is between um, Calais and um, the White Cliffs of Dover, um, yeah, I, I, that was a terrible time. All right. Thank you for finding that. As I I had seen it and I was so impacted by it that I wanted to uh, share that. Thanks for looking that up, Claire. Oh, okay. that's just heartbreaking. It no is, wonder they sent the kids out to the country. Right, I have a link about the children too. But okay, the, the um, let's see. The next item that you had asked about was the nineteen um, thirty-nine British registers. All right, and while I'm bringing that up, let's go see what cousin Russ has now, to while share. While you're bringing that in, uh, yeah. Kathleen said I was looking at this uh, weekend and found one of my relatives in the civilian casualties. Of the blitz, oh. very sad. Oh, oh yeah. very sad. Extremely uh, sad. Yes, very. Okay, so uh, talk to us about this 1939 register. Um, it's a part of the National Archives, nationalarchives.gov.uk, um, and they didn't do a census in 1941, did they? No, they did not. Because of the outbreak of the Second World War, they did not. So the 1939 register, which is a godsend, it really is, because there isn't going to be a 1941 census. Right. And so the next one after that is 51. That's a long time away. So this is the closest you can get to finding an address uh, from a census type record. Correct. That's right. So, um, and what was the purpose of their taking this in 1939? They state on here the records were used to produce, it says it, an up-to-date population statistics in the ID cards because of rationing. <gasps> okay, so they knew who to give the ration cards to. Okay, right. And so um, it's, and it has family, it has everything. It's a useful resource. Uh, and then, of course, you've got to remember now, the 1931 uh, British census was destroyed yes. uh, also in Second World War. So you have the 1911, which is what we have right now. We will have the 1921, but nothing again until 1951 except for this 1939. Yeah. So very similar to our 1890 dilemma. Oh, yes, we have that problem here in the U.S. Now, it's interesting that they didn't do Channel Islands, Isle of Man, Scotland, Northern Ireland. So we basically uh, got England and Wales. Right. Okay. And the thing is, you know, the one of the nice things about it is even though it's not a census, it follows the similar pattern, so people can use it like a census. Mm -hmm. and. If you scroll down to the essential information, it goes down, it tells you um, these records do include the populations of, but not, like you said, not the Channel Islands, not the Isle of Man, not Scotland. So you get Northern. the address, their schedule and sub number, surname, forename, the role, like if they're, if it's an institution, gender, but yeah, it does kind of look like it would be a census record. Right. Um, and then there's a national registration number for the household. So, um, <laughs> okay. But there's some redactions, and we need to mention this. Right. So you need to go down and point out these things, because otherwise people are going to think, oh, great. That means England's released something that we can use. Well, not quite. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Read what it says. It's important they understand. Well, I understand this right to privacy of a hundred years. Um, I think that we have to bow to that when uh, it's just when they um, make it so so tight that you can't get anything unless you're a direct descendant. That's not true here. It's that if they were born less than a hundred years ago, which that means nineteen 
16 or less. Um, yeah, my dad was born in 1918 and he died when he was 89 in 2007. So, yeah, it would have to be, yeah, I get it. It would have to be a, a, a very young child. Uh, okay, they weren't in England and Wales. They appear under a false name. Yeah, and that's not, a, I mean, how many times have you hear of aliases? You know, yeah. people, people throughout time just don't, didn't trust the government of any kind. And mm -hmm. they'd always, they don't, you know, how many times have you, have you done research? And I'm so, so maybe somebody in the, in the group that's watching us, mm -hmm. where someone never ages either from one census to the next. <laughs> Especially my grandma Frances. Oh my gosh. Uh, names may not appear as you expect them. Uh, yes, yeah. so here we're encouraged to try different spellings, and I would say if you're accustomed to doing research um, at, for instance, Ancestry, they spend a lot of time customizing their their um, search algorithm. Right. And uh, but um, and I can't compare and contrast that algorithm with how things seem to come up on the hit list uh, in the over at the National Archives. But you can use wildcards. Uh, okay. Information. This is this is typical database work. Whether However, we're looking at 1939, etc. Look at 5.6 though. That's really important. Ah. And you have to read what it says below because of the mass evacuations. So many of the of the so many of the records of many individuals were listed entirely different places. I mean, people formed groups to stay together to protect one another. So mm -hmm. you may not have you may have um, neighbors living together or mm -hmm. trying to support one another. This is in the middle of war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I'm aware that. They took children and sent them way out into the country uh, for safety, as we mentioned with the uh, London bombing. But but this could this is a big deal um, to be aware of how close England and Wales were to the to the battle front. They were at the battle's front. They were. Um, okay, change of street name. Boy, they even do that here. In Salt Lake, they decided to renumber the streets. So my ancestors' homes over on the west side, uh, north of um, South Temple there, um, yeah, I have to, like, remember when I go over there, oops, everything's over one block. <laughs> so, uh, And there's the um, names being withheld. So have you... Um, obtained one of these 1939 register entries. You haven't had any people that were there then, Claire? Uh, we haven't really gone into the 1939. We sort of stuck with the 1911s. Yeah. A lot of a lot of Les's family by then were had moved over to Australia, so yes. we really haven't had. We he still has family living in the in uh, England today, but there's not as many. So All we right. Have, we haven't. And would be nice if if. Um, when Audrey comes on, if she could, if if we know, if we can get a copy of okay. one, so you can view one online. We maybe we just go in and type a name and see if we can find one. All right. Well, we'll but we'll mention too at the top. We've got that wonderful option. Are they all online? Yep, they're all online. And the right. reason I wanted you to bring this in, Claire, is that unlike what we experienced here in the U.S., uh, uh, I grew up. Uh, you know, I've white middle-class ancestry. I wasn't part of the uh, Japanese that were um, sent to camps uh, along all over the country. Uh, so the war didn't impact my ancestors. But when you're talking about England, the war impacted them greatly. Um, big manor houses were turned into field hospitals, things like that. So you had people in very unexpected places and this 1939 register uh, reflects that so very good thank you for bringing those two things in alright so we could hit number 33 which is okay. the World War II now you have to understand that yeah. 
that a lot of the World War II records are with the Department of Ministry because of this 100 years. So where yeah. we I we will what we'll be able to get is going to be minimal and mostly through memorials and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the medals and things like that. Um, you know, it's here in the U.S. I always try to compare and contrast what I'm learning in this session with what I already know, and um, we have a. We have a thing here where World War II records are damaged in St. Louis from a fire and from the water from the fire. And so uh, if I didn't have, for instance, my dad's military ID card uh, and his DD-214 or I don't know, something like that, Mr. Mert would know what that is. That I is wouldn't, it. That's it? Oh, yes, yeah. you would know, Russ. Uh, that's the separation papers um, that says you're honorably discharged. So if I didn't have those two things, I mean, I probably have more than St. Louis has on my dad. And if I do, I need to send them copies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I publish, my genealogy will be good. Well, All you right. know, that's what DAR did. When the courthouses burnt down, just not to divert too much, but just to make a quick statement that when the courthouses burnt down, the DAR um, eventually came in and tried to get the help of all the different people to reconstruct the papers as best they can. Yep, there's uh, Cousin Russ's DD-214. Yay! Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have never seen one of those ones. <laughs> Yes, I know where those records are should anything happen to Mr. Mert. All right, so let's get back on British. That's the um you've got some interesting comments and Audrey hasn't arrived yet. I want to talk about uh, a question that was posed. Um should we wait and see if she does make it in today? She's she's here. I'm bringing her up. Oh good, she is. All right. So I uh, is everything. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so while she's working on that, let's go to one of the next things. That, yeah, that would be that. Yeah, that first W. Yeah, that one there. Brought you brought that up. So let's look at that. Okay. So this tells you what's some of it's viewable, some of it's not. Mm -hmm. the, oh, this is the Siemens campaign medal records. Yep. So that's one of the things that's publicly available. Correct. Okay, and I just love this indication and the um, explanation of it. So let's search for somebody. Yep, let's go do that. And uh, Audrey will be joining us. Uh, last name Collins. Yep, let's go see. All right. And Camera. we'll see what it looks Okay, thank you, Russ. <laughs> okay, so you want to go past the ones for 1918. You want to try and find one later. Um, because we're okay. talking about 1939 to 1945. There you go. There's one 19. Uh, let's see. Can we go back? For, yeah. Let's see. This 19, fellow 20. was 1946. Yeah, that's that might be one. Let's. You can try it. Let's see. 1920. 1920. I know that we have to go further down because of the of okay, the fact. Okay, don't look. All, you don't want to get a headache. They're all mixed in. Yeah, but I think on the side here, and this is something for people to notice, we can refine our search Let's by telling we, them we want the 1925 to 1949. Yep. So let's refine. I'll click that button. Oh, yeah. I like my little red pointer. Yeah, I do. Uh, do. Would we like to see a tour of this page? Oh, I love that kind of support. Okay, so there's still 1918. Okay, so that might be one then. Let's... Let's check it out. Okay, but he was, oh, that's when he was born. All right, so let's go look. So he couldn't have fought in World War One, then, now could he? No. Seems too young for World War Two. The record is available for viewing. Show image. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, we get one of those. Is this yeah. one of those ones that have polka dots? <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, so let me, it's thinking about it. We use cookies. Yes, we got to agree to that. Uh, it's taking a while to come in. Uh, they're low resolution and have been um, intentionally distorted. To download a high resolution, please complete uh, for the complete record. Add it to your basket. So it looks like we have to purchase it. Okay. So um, that's how we search and how you can refine your search. And I don't know why it's taking so long to load. It just but we're fine. Day. We're fine. We're good, and our Audrey girl's coming in <laughs> in a minute. Uh, I think Cousin Russ wants you to check your settings for your mic. 
Um, and let's, uh, should we go up to our red ones? Uh, uh, as soon as she's in, um, we could slip over to the ones on Ancestry if you want to see some real records. Okay. Let's go to Ancestry, and the very first one is on, world, on line number 18. Okay, World War II records. All right. Okay. This was this was a fabulous article that I thought was worth putting in here. Yeah. And it, and it talks about um, the types of records that are available. And um, normally I don't go through this part, but what I thought was interesting, it talks about the different record sets, and now those are the next ones in the list. So POWs and things like that. Okay. So yeah. So if you go back and click on um, 19, you'll get the. Uh, let's see. Type, no, there isn't one. All right. Line. Line um the bowl of Anna. Okay. Line, line All right, twenty. Well, let me log in first so that it'll um and heaven help me if I can remember my password for ancestry. Apparently we had an update or something, cousin Russ. That's gonna be the pit. Um <laughs> I'd, why don't we do this? While I'm doing my ancestry thing, why don't we have you and Audrey Discuss a query that we received. Do you want to introduce the query and then we'll have Audrey answer the questions? Sure. Let me see if I can get to that. One of our individual uh, members sent us a query about how an individual named John Patrick McMahon, service number, tell there was a service number, and tells that he went to England to fly for the British before he entered the US part of the war and so while there he met his future wife Helen which is fabulous and then when the US entered the war um, after Pearl Harbor he came home with Helen and he fought with the US as a marine so she's found his records uh, for him on ancestry which tells her that he joined the military in 34 mm -hmm. 1934 and stayed with the Marines as a career um, but there's the muster rolls have a gap between 34 and 44, and she's not been able to trace them. And so what we did was we were wondering if any British records were available. As we know, the World War II records are with the Department of Defense, but Audrey did find some different things out, and she can now take over. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, um, most service records for people who served in any of the forces after about the middle of the 1920s, they're still held by the Ministry of Defence. Um, the only exception to that is some Royal Air Force records, but only for other ranks, not for officers. Now, she doesn't say what rank he was, but when she sort of talks about flying, it suggests he maybe was a pilot. Um, if that's the case, then he certainly would have been an officer. Mm -hmm. So, um, unfortunately, those records are definitely still with the Ministry of Defence. If you've got enough information, you can get them. There is a cost involved and you have to apply to the uh, MOD. And there is a link um, in the... the I, I gave Claire links to lots of relevant... Right, and it's, yeah. it's there. It's there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so I've, I've, I am I logged into Ancestry. <laughs> They keep saying I'm not, but I'm logged in, and I'm ready to uh, pick up with where we left off. These are the the record groups that um, Audrey is talking about. They're in the bottom uh, 40 through 47 lines, 40 through 47. No. Those and are those are not the ones that she's talking about. She's talking about the records from the uh, the Department of Ministry. Oh, those, okay. the, the records from down in that section are the free records that are available, and we were going to try and do a, do a demo on that and show okay. how you do that. All right, so we need to take the text that uh, Audrey put in her email to you and me and put it on... Um, on a, a, make a new tab called Ministry of Defense. Oh. And that will give, um, and then cite her as a source of that information, and that would be useful, because um, we wouldn't know that otherwise. And uh, try as we might in studying all these particular record groups, Claire, that's just that's really going to help. Well, I'll do that. Person. I will add that in. Okay, so folks, don't don't worry about downloading this again for about a day or two, so Claire has a <laughs> chance to catch up. All right, where do we go next? Okay, um, so um, 
we could go to Ancestry and check out what they do have. They do have some, some good records there. Okay. So, um, line 20, um, 21. 20, okay. No, 20. Line 20. I'm sorry. Okay. The role of honor. Okay. All right, it likes me now. It knows that I'm really a member of Ancestry.com, like I wouldn't. <laughs> okay, so let's see what this looks like. We'll type in Collins, one of our favorite names. Of course. And uh, um, see what we can do. Uh, this is the UK Army Roll of Honor. And Rifleman, uh, let me just pick somebody that was in the French and Belgium campaign. So we'll look at David D.W. David Collins, a private. All right, so what we're getting from this is not an image, but we now know the branch of the service, his number, which, which I've now learned those numbers can change. It's not like his name ranks serial number. That number changes, correct? Well, by in, in the First World War, you can have lots of number changes. The British Army did bring in a single number that stays, and I'm not sure when they did that, but I think it was before the Second World War. But, oh. you know, that, so I'm not absolutely sure. But a number is always useful, though. Yeah. Um, and, and if you were trying to get somebody's record from the Ministry of Defence, if you've got some you know, independent record of it, such as a role of honor or a medal entitlement, H knowing somebody's number could be very, very helpful. Um, yes, so just a matter of let's copy and paste this, put it in notes for that military service event in our genealogy program, and then we can use that later to communicate with the Ministry of Defense. They can look up the record. Now, let me ask you, Audrey, do we know about that process? When if we if I were to send an email to them, um, is that the or do they have a form to fill Oh, out? they they have forms. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. If you if you follow, the, there is a link to the uh, it's, it's called the Veterans Agency, which is part of the Ministry of Defence, and they deal with um, records that haven't come to us at the National Archives yet. Now they do two things: they deal with records for people who are trying to get their own records. Um, and and that is the bulk, that's the the main focus of what they do. So people getting records of deceased uh, service personnel um, for their research, they do that, but that's secondary. So that's why it does take longer because it's not their priority. But the the site is um, is gives you very very good detailed information on exactly what you need to do. You have to download a form. Yes. You have to send them a form, uh, a paper form in a p in an envelope. Oh, okay. and, and if you are not the service person, um, you might need to fill in a next of kin form as well. It depends. If somebody died more than 25 years ago, that doesn't matter. And unfortunately, unless they've changed it very, very recently, they haven't quite got with the 21st century because the website is very nice, but they still require payment on a strange paper thing called a check. Oh my uh, gosh! <laughs> I know. Fashion. Okay, um, so uh, I've sent the link to the Ministry of Defense, and mm. I spelled it in. Oh, I spelled it correctly. Okay. <laughs> um, so that um, our researchers of tw uh, World War Two. Well, well, the the, the link there is a link in the one of the guide one of the many guides that we've got, and I'm not sure if I sent Claire the direct link to the Veterans Agency part of the. the All right. So let me. I sent that to. I sent that to Russ. Mm. Uh, and, that, and that's where you need to go to find out the, the exactly what to do to get uh, a service record. Okay, here's the that's the exact. There you go. There that's you the go. One. Yeah. Okay, this is critically important. I'm gonna. Um, I just I'm gonna, put the link in. All right, I'm gonna actually go show you how I will update this. I did. Go. It, it was updated. It's in there. It's on the oh, page. It's, it's on the National Archives page. Oh, okay. And it's right there. Uh, See, it's order this. from Veterans Agency. That's line 37 Seven. for World War II. That's just very exciting. Okay. So now we know more about the Ministry of Defense. If the person passed away less than 25 years ago, do we have to provide a certified copy of the death certificate? 
Uh, no, uh, well, yeah, you sh I think you should have a, a death certificate. They don't require a certified copy, oh, which okay. is kind of silly of them, but they don't understand these things and don't tell them. Um, <laughs> okay. But if, if, you are, if you're not next of kin, then you can still get the record, but you won't get all the details on it. Again, the site tells you exactly what you will and won't get. How uh, to apply, so, yeah. things for yourself about deceased service, how to apply home guard service records. Yes, okay. All right. It's all there. They, they do set it out very, very well. It is a good, clear site. Uh, okay. And you do have to just download the forms because they, they won't, if, if you ask them a question um, in a letter or an email, they'll send you a form and ask you to fill it in and send it back. So so do, you don't need a pen, friend. Just cut to the chest, download the form, fill it in. Uh, okay. So that's the way to do it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that guidance. All right. Okay. So, um, and and uh, in filling out that form, we're going to take this very information hmm. that we found uh, on our, our private David Collins and see what we can come up with. Um, and this, yeah, excellent work, ladies, excellent work. Okay, what should we do next, Claire? Okay, so um, the next thing down there on um, under Ancestry, you've got your choice. You can pick a few different ones there. There's Navy list. There's um, metal uh, the uh, metal uh, electrical engineers, World War One, World War Two. See, notice that these are all different types of honor rolls because of the actual service records are not available to us. Okay, um, so you can pick out something. Any one of those will do. Okay, so we're also seeing New Zealand, Australia, Canada, South African War Graves Project. Yep. There's several Holocaust items. Including right, there's one up there from Ancestry. It says Holocaust Survivor names, mm -hmm. and that's up there. So there's a number of them to choose from as far as that goes. All right, so um, what are memorial books? Let me go okay. look these up. Um, All right. I'll pull that up, and this time we'll look for Harper. I think that's a... Well, do, check on the source information first. It tells you about, the, about oh, what yes. it is. That was your question. Down a, yeah, it tells you about them when they okay, were... Okay, so you have Berwick's uh, Croydon and uh, Second World War, the official history. Right. And, the Croydon yeah. Royal, and Croydon is more than just a loca one specific locality, right? Well, yeah, it, it's a it's it's a town in Surrey, sort of verging on the edge of London. An awful lot of these uh, rolls of honour, they're not official records, although they can be very accurate. They're often produced by uh, possibly a town or a locality, sometimes by um, an employer, something like you know the Great Western Railway. Oh, so okay. you get lots and lots of these, um, and and some of them. I mean, there was something for the First World War, which was called the National Roll of the Great War, mm -hmm. which was it was a bit of private enterprise, and it was done by sort of individually canvassing families. Mm -hmm. So it's not an official record, and it's not going to be comprehensive. But some of these rolls of honour, um, something like trade unions, sometimes produce them. So. Mm -hmm. Claire's absolutely right. Before you even think about looking at them, see who produced it. Um, but they can be, you know, so there's a lot of variation. Some give a lot of detail and some don't. All right. Schools and universities too. Yeah, so. All right, so some of this is really early. The University of London Officers Training, 1914-1919. And here's the record of service the Great War by members of the London County Council. So if you don't have somebody living in Croydon, um, this database isn't going to help you. So thank you for pushing me to read what is the source <laughs> of this. Because I'm thinking this is a pretty comprehensive collection if it's memorial books covering this time period. Oh, and the other thing I should have mentioned is a lot of uh, roles of honor were produced by newspapers. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, and they will often refer you to um, an entry in an, in the newspaper. I I found one for my, you know, my my, my well my great uncle Geordie, the man that I I tracked down. I mentioned yeah. last week, and that was in one of the main Glasgow newspapers. Have a roll of honor, and the index is online. And when you find the entry that you want that you, you could then have to go and find the newspaper which I did in the Mitchell library and you will get well you'll get what is there and it okay. might be a photograph a little bit of an obituary um, but okay we've got a together question. it constitutes a roll of honor okay uh, we've got a question from Kathleen Kathleen says I understand the 100 year policy but is it the, but is there an England equivalent to our World War two draft cards where you 
might find information on someone even if they did not serve? Uh, afraid not, and there isn't even a British one. Um, yeah. So it's kind of important to know the difference, mm. although that might that might change in a while. But let's not go there. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's been a time lately. I've been watching your posts on Facebook. So just a bit, just a bit. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So we've got this uh, document to look at, and these are one of those published. This is like, um, this is like secondhand information on a subject about your ancestor. In other words just like the index, um, the, the, um, this, this may provide direct evidence that's true or false, but it is second-hand or secondary information, probably third or fourth-hand by the time you get to a... a well, um, the thing is, it's got valid information. For instance, the, yeah. if you look at Charlie Hopper, you know, yeah. he's a, he's a civ civilian and it tells you the cemetery uh, where he's buried. So now anybody, any genealogical researcher can take that information and follow it up with that. Yes. Yeah. All right. They've, they've, um, he was killed, this one, David Noel, uh, in the Air Force, killed in England while flying, 25th February, 1941. Tells that he gained his wings, that was in February, he got his wings in December the year before. That is just, oh. Two months. Yeah, um, and the other thing that that one will tell you, because that's a fairly um, comprehensive one, yeah. and this man was a pilot, he was an officer, and he obviously came from quite a wealthy background. And now you you have no way of knowing this, but I happen to know that the City of London School is a public school, which in England means it's not very public at all. It's a private school. It costs you money. So, oh, but, oh. yeah. And, but these sort of prestige schools, the you know, the the things that you just, you just you just have to go with the flow here. They're public schools. I'm sorry. Don't shoot the messenger. But okay. these schools, you know, the, the famous ones like Eton and Harrow and Winchester and and uh, City Marlborough. of London. And the City yeah. of London. It, it's it's not one of the sort of top notch ones, but it's still a public school. But those long established public schools and a lot of old grammar schools, um, they will often have very good, so you might be able to track those down. Mm. Some of them are online. So if you get a... I think she's frozen. She's fading a little bit. Um, her, <laughs> let's, let's say our prayers so that her internet works oh, out. Oh, she came right. back. She came back. She came yeah. back. Yeah, there I she think, is. I think, I think I had a loose connection. What does that say about me? Anyway, um, <laughs> if, if you find an indication that somebody went to one of these schools, or it may mention a university, then that's another set of records you can follow up. Okay. Um, and I think that one said something about inns of court as well. So ah, you've got somebody in the that's involved with the legal profession somehow. Oh, inns of court. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'd need to have somebody explain to me what all those abbreviations mm -hmm. are, etc. Yeah. There might be something in the beginning of the book too to help yeah. us with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But sometimes in that wonderfully British way, well. Um, well, surely every chap knows that OTC is the officer training course, so one doesn't need to explain. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you get a lot of help and sometimes you just don't. All right, got it. All right, so we've got a comment from the community. Let's see. Susan asked, those links for the ministry and the others that are listed are going to be extremely helpful. Thank you very much, Audrey and Claire. <laughs> Looks like I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> so was it Susan who requested? I think it was. Um, yeah. I can't recall. All right. So um, excellent. All right. So that's an interesting um, summary, these memorial books. Okay. All right. So let's scoot over to uh, find so my be, Before we go oh. there, Audrey brought something up that I, I think it's worth saying again. Sometimes it is important to look at the history of the place where you would pick up what OTC means or where you pick up what public school means, especially coming from this side of the ocean. I would look for OCS yeah. as opposed to OTC. Yeah, Officers Candidate right, right. School. And, here. And the word public in the front of, of a school would not necessarily be one of prestige. Yeah. I hear you. So, yes, what's the lay of the land there, not where you are now in the 21st century? Okay, you want us to go to where? Dear, find, find my path. Find my path. 
asked, and I'm, since we're on the subject of schools, when I was doing the research, um, Audrey, I came across, uh, there's a couple of databases in here, one's on 29 and one's on 35, and it talks about schools, but it also brings up military, so I'm wondering what the connection is, so if you could open that up, um, no. one of those up, that would be great, okay. and maybe Audrey can help us out with that. Why no. would they be... Why would they be um, part of that, you know? Okay, this is... Uh, oh, that's the... No, you got the wrong one. The, it's the one oh, below it. Oh, it's okay, one, sorry. One, go to line 29. 29. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Line 29. That looks, yeah, that looks like one of... Without opening up, that looks like one of the, the things I was saying where a school okay. has kept its own record uh, and you get a lot of those for the big uh, public schools. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah... That, so, that's exactly so, the sort of thing. so it, when I was looking at this under the learn more, mm. it tells you that there's um, you get rank and all that. You get mm. a whole bunch of stuff for an individual that would have been in the in the military, and I couldn't understand why it was a school. Yeah, yeah, it's because the I mean, it, it, it's very very common if you go to a, a school, particularly a a boys' school or a mixed school, they will often have um, you know a, a roll of honor on the on the wall or. And, and often a, a book, if not, sometimes it'll be a published one, but um, it's recorded former pupils and what happened to them oh, and okay. that was. And oh. that, that's very, very common. We've, I've got oh. a lovely one, we've got it in one of our records because it was enclosed with some correspondence for um, a, a school in, in uh, and I've forgotten the name of it, but it's, it's one of the sort of top grammar schools in Leicestershire and in the middle of the First World War they produced a fantastic role of honour uh, and this gave the list of all the, the former pupils who were serving and also masters who'd left and who were serving and what they were in and what happened to them. It's incredibly detailed. Wixton okay. Grammar School, that's what it was, yeah, like anybody cares. So <laughs> this person mm -hmm. um, was born in 1917, mm -hmm. gives wow. parents, including um, the mother, um, Ernest oh. and Eleanor. Yeah. Wow. He was a wing commander pilot, so that mm -hmm. he's in the Air Force, the 9th Squadron. Mm -hmm. He got the Distinguished Flying Cross. He just, it's hard to read these things. <laughs> 21st June, I know I'm supposed to be impartial, but I'm a grandma, and I've got a grandson just off to college who wasn't much older than this. Mm -hmm. uh, Second World War, he died in 1942. That's where he's buried in the Netherlands. Row and grave number, uh, and he's uh, that's just amazing. So and this that information about his death. Now you would find that on the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, and sometimes you'll get on there you'll get details about parents, but you won't necessarily get all the information that the school have got here. So the school would might have information that you won't find anywhere else. So that could be the thing that just confirms that you've got the right person. So yes. they're always worth looking at. They might not have anything extra, but sometimes they will, and they're so worth it. Okay, so just a reminder about the Commonwealth uh, yeah, War Graves Commission. I'll send you all that mm -hmm. link, and then we'll go. Okay. All right, that was, this is good. All right, so now what shall I look at here? Okay, so you could probably pick up, pick one of the others there. There's um, prisoners were held by the German territories, uh, officers okay. serving, either one of those, and then we can slip into seeing if uh, we can have a demo with um, Audrey about how to get some of the free downloads. Okay, yeah. so it's not remembering that I was just at Find My I Cross. know, that is weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll have to sign in again, just a second, and yeah. here can, we go. What, what, while you're doing that, can I just say about the, um, yes. the, the record, the, the Prisoner of War records on Find My Past, they've, well, first they've got a free week or a free few days, which is very, very timely. Till the 4th of yeah. July, the end yeah. of the 4th of July. But they've uh, very timely for you. But they have um, they they've been working on this huge, huge, great tranche of records, the prisoner of war records, and these go right back to the the very earliest ones are in 1760. But that's a whole record set that've got all the loads and loads of War of 1812 prisoners and other Napoleonic com, uh, prisoners, and lots and lots for the Second World War. And for the Second World War, although we don't have service records. 
we have very, very good prisoner records, and particularly for um, British and Commonwealth prisoners in the Far East uh, theatre of war. Right, yeah, there was some there. Phen for them. Absolutely phenomenal amount of records. Fair amount for Germany and Italy, but for the Far East, they are just amazing. I mean, they're, they're, they're awful to read, some of them, but they're, oh. they're, they're, they're fantastically detailed records. So if anybody has someone who was in any of the British forces and even um, there are some civilians there too because when places like Singapore were overrun there were a lot of civilians were kept in prison camps um, and in fact this evening before I uh, about an hour before I left work I was helping somebody who found the the Japanese um, record card for his father oh, wow. who had been a, was a rubber planter in Malay, Malaysia. Oh. Oh. Uh, I mean he, he survived the war um, uh, but this man was, you know, he just came in sort of on spec and I was able to show him. So these records, some of them have only gone online in the last week. Um, the, uh, wow. And he was able to find this record card. And he thought his father was a civilian, but he found that he was actually part of the Malay Federated States Volunteer Force. Oh. So he had been in uniform. So he was amazed at this. So he's gone off to do a lot more homework. Um, All right. And then find out about the background. But. Far East Prisoners of War, a brilliant set of records. All right, so right now I'm looking at the officers of the Empire serving in the British, mm. um, and there are these, search for your ancestors in these record sets, the German territories, right, uh, etc. Further information, you're training me. Uh, yeah. Transit camps, different, uh, the transit camp of the Luftwaffe, um, officer, oh my gosh, internment camp. I mean, they've uh, done a fabulous job in bringing these in. They really have. Okay, so let's type in that same surname, James. Uh, okay, didn't have one. Good. It's one think... less person. <laughs> what what name would you like me to search? Try putting Chapman. I think I did Chapman, and I found somebody. Okay. I think. So we're doing a very broad search. All I'm doing is the last name. Oops, didn't nope. find one. Okay, okay, I guess do Smith. I guess that'll always get you somebody. All righty. Uh, if we have anybody in the uh, audience, audience, yes. No Smiths. Oh my gosh. Um. All right. We'll edit a search. Um. I'll I'll put in law. There is a isn't there an A to Z record sets? Or is oh yeah, that? yeah. If you go to that, the really big set, the one that you want is the one that's called Prisoners of War, seventeen fifteen to nineteen forty five, and that's got everything in it. And you can um, f uh, refine that by you know by, by conflict and by. Is that the one where they're in the German territory? Uh, no, it is the whole record set is called Prisoners of War, 1715 to 1945. Okay, okay. You, you can find that using the A to Z or something else, but that that's the one. Um, oh, okay, there it, there it is. is. There right it is. there, right there. there. It's already. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. All right, so. Okay, so Shouldn't now. Shouldn't have any trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll probably end up with a lot of World War Ones. No, oh, that's World no. War Two. Mm. Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. They don't have first names for these gunners, etc. Well, that depends on the kind of record it is, because sometimes you get very detailed records about a particular prisoner. Sometimes it's just an index page or a you know a, 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 a muster roll for a camp. If you, when you're back on the main advanced search page, you've yep. got some filters that you can use before you search. One of them is browse by conflict. So if you only want Second World War or First World War or Napoleonic, you can narrow it down to that. So let's um, see what let's see what this entry is. Um, he's an American. Oh. Yeah, Nationality. That looks, mm -hmm. Uh, Japan and Taiwan, deaths at various camps. So this particular card, we're looking at a transcription. Let's go view the image. Oh boy! Yeah. When I look at these images, my heart just yeah. That started. that looks looks like that's probably a you know what. what 
a muster roll for a particular camp. You get a lot of those, but sometimes it'll be an index card or a record. And yes. the, the, there's the, there's a huge huge variety. If you um, if if you go back to that advanced search page again, okay, I will. Yes. But I wanted to mention that's like when they type up a list and they make a copy with tissue paper. Yeah, a tissue paper copy. You want me to go all the way to a new search? No, she wants you to go back to. <laughs> right. Okay, that's fine. Now, if you scroll down, yes, um, and then just Browse keep on going. Find one. You can do that. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going, and then it's right. Keep going. You're nearly there. Now, right down. I think it's there. right. Okay, um, that one where it says World War Two. And it gives you the dates in case you didn't know. Um, yeah. And if you look at the one, particularly the Far East one, if you open that up, you will get ah. a phenomenal list. Now, just oh. look at that and see what is. It, it will take you a long time to scroll through that, so don't. But that gives you an idea of just how many different records are in there and what sort of source they came from. There's a big set there you can see, which is the Japanese index card. Yes. Yeah, uh, but there are loads and loads of others, and you you know you can you can see where your slider is on the right hand side, just how yeah, much there is on that third page. Is way there, yeah. Um, as a couple of things, because I've been going through this a lot, it gives you the archival reference and then the description. Now, in a few cases, there's been a glitch, and you get so you get something on there, a description that just looks weird or it's gibberish. If that's the case, what you need to do is to take the reference. Um, just the w, the w that's it. it uh, so if there's a description there that doesn't make any sense or there's no proper description, if you take that, you can use that to go into discovery, the, our in our catalog, and see and see what the the archival description is. In most cases, find my past have just taken it and put it on the list. But you know what happens when you do these things. You always get glitches and some things that don't get done properly. So you can always go to the catalog and see what the description is. But that gives you an idea of the phenomenal range of records. OK, so uh, I'm going to actually go back and search the records, or just so I put the number in up here. Uh, no, if you, what you're on now is the, is the guides. If you go to um, home. The website. Yeah, well, you can go to the website. That's useful because it shows people what to do when they've landed on the website. So, go hit Explore Our Records. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And that takes you to the landing page, which links you to all the guides. Now, there's lots of different ways of getting to the same thing. You can go in. I mean, if you were looking for something to do with the first, first or second world war, you can go in through that war. You can go in through <coughs> military and maritime, or you can go in through family history. They will all get you there, but you get different. You know, if, if you go to second world war, you'll get lots of stuff about. Um, operational records and research and development, as well as things to do with service records. Okay. Um, so no, hang on, no. So that that was just the record, guys. Now, if you want to look for that catalog reference, yes. you click on the link to discovery. Okay, uh, that's yeah. this one. There's that's your catalog it. right there. Yep. I wish that was going a different to... color. It looks beautiful, but I wish it was a different color. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, right, I'm and ready then to if start. you just in the box, if you just put in that search. Okay. And by the hit. way, let me give the, everybody the link to Discovery. Mm. Um, that and I'll press enter. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we're getting the and far that tells east. you the full description. Yes. Now, most Goodbye. of the time, you won't need to do that because Find My Past have got a perfectly good description, mm -hmm. but some of them it's just gone all glitchy and it doesn't make any sense. So that's your belt and braces thing. If you want to know what the heck it is, the catalog will <laughs> tell the, you. I love the colloquialisms here. Okay, very, very cool. All right, I, I love that you're ex that I'm doing what it is you're explaining we should do if we have a problem and can't yeah. find oh, yeah. and, and a can reasonable I give, definition. I just, I just yeah. thought I need to do a little bit of a plug because I'm doing um, well, we are doing some live webinars, um, and I will grab. I've got a list of the dates here somewhere. Um, I'm doing one on discovery, and we've already done webinars and talks on that. But this is specifically aimed at family historians, and I will be doing that um, 
uh, sometime in July. I can't remember the date, but it should be on the website now. We're going to do that one three times. I'm not going to be doing all of them because I've got, certainly for the second one, which is the 9th of August. All right, I'm so give us the link when you find it. Yeah. And um, because that, we would love to share that with our folks here. Yeah. Let me close it, a few windows. I've got 500 <laughs> windows open. Cabs. Uh, okay. All right, so Claire, I'm back on your uh, checklist. Right. Okay. So okay. I just would like you to slip Camera. on slip on the one that says online records. Yes. Just let people know there are some additional resources on some of these. We're getting close to the end, but there's the one I mentioned to you. There, there's one children in World War II, mm -hmm. and it talks about how they what they did and how they helped them and all that jazz it's a very that's very very what they you know all the different areas and how they handled it and with how they moved them around and see they were massively affected nearly two million children um, it's important I think we mentioned last week we also did one with World War One but it tells how they were you know Operation Pied Piper if you look a little bit further down it says yeah, we started it says yeah. August 31st, 1939, an order from the government to evacuate right. forthwith. Oh my God! And then the um, Operation Pied Piper was started the very next day. Oh my gosh! And so you know, I we just, think of we think yeah. of Syrian refugees right now, uh, people in Turkey, etc. These children went without their family. Right. You, you read what it says. It's really sad. Six six cities were deemed vulnerable to German bombing, and um, and so the children were 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 evacuated. Were given a, a stamp postcard to send from their address to inform the parents of where they were. Now, the fact even if they arrived with the postal the way it was, you saw the bombing raids. Yeah. I mean, it was it's amazing that they didn't. They probably didn't all make it so that parents knew where the children were. It was it, it's such a big part of our um, sort of life and culture. I mean, people of my generation, my uh, or people of, we've got parents who were evacuees. Yes. Uh, my mother was an evacuee. Didn't she didn't like it? She went straight back to Glasgow. Uh, but my mother-in-law went from London to um, a, a place called Langton Matravers in Dorset. Absolutely loved it. Ended up retiring near there because she liked it so much. Um, so you know the, the whole evacuee experience is a fascinating one, um, but it was just your know, children. They turned up at school um, with the, with the, the little you know, case with all their stuff in, um, and a label like Paddington Bear. They had a label attached to them, oh. with their names on, and then they all when they arrived in their host towns, they were. Um, you know, they they would just get sort of billeted on families that were willing to take them, and in some cases, families that weren't all that willing. But we've we've got all these kids that need a home. You will, you've got a spare room. You will take them. Yeah. Um, and and some of them had fabulous experiences, and some of them had awful experiences. I have got the school magazine, the actual school magazine of my mother-in-law's school. And it describes all, what all these these streetwise London kids from South London. Yes. What they made of the countryside. It was a completely alien environment. They mostly had a wonderful time, um, but it's just such a mm. an eye opener. They're describing that this is they've they've never seen. They didn't know milk fake came from cows. They'd not, you know, they they, they were always um, going you know getting into trouble because they, they, because they were clueless. They would yeah. go off and they'd climb trees and they'd get stuck and have to be rescued. They'd go into a field and then they'd discover there was a bull in it and then they'd, they'd have to be rescued. They'd go walking along the coast and they didn't realize that the tide would come in and they'd get cut off and have to be rescued. Oh uh, and the good people of Langton and Travis were still very nice to them. You know, oh. um, it, it, It's just a whole... Everybody my age knows somebody, whether it's a parent or an aunt or somebody who was an evacuee. One of um, those. Evacuee. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. okay. So um, I'm. I'm. This is just to get this, the gist of this experience uh, that that England and Wales went through, being so and, close. And Scotland. Yeah. And Scotland. Okay. Yeah. And Scotland. 
Yeah, because yeah. my, my mother was evacuated from Glasgow. Glasgow was a big, big target for bombing because of the heavy industry there. Yeah. Um, oh. and, the, and the shipyards. See, uh, and it was bombed very that. heavily. I, to, to me, I wouldn't have known that. So it's so... Pr it's precious. It's valuable to hear these things. Did yeah. you have something from the community, Russ? Sorry? Did we have something from the community? I just had one, and I. it was a while ago. I put it on oh, the screen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the service number was on that record. There may be a way to get more specific information. Yes. I think that uh, any little shred of information we can get to help mm -hmm. identify this soldier as unique from another one uh, would be good. Was okay. there a demonstration we wanted to show? Not at Audrey's here? Yes. yes. Audrey, could you take a moment and, and maybe uh, Pat could go to the National Archives and click on that top link there where it, sa where it says uh, free the records right there. Oh. Yep, uh, yeah, that one. All right, and I, what I'll do is I will um, change my screen so it's line seven, everybody. Right, and then click on that, and there are all sorts of records that we can download. And I tried to play with this and struggled with it, so I'm hoping that Audrey can shed some light on this one. Right, okay. okay. Uh, so, now, what you want to do is um, we want digital microfilm, which is, um, I'll tell you what, go to go right back to dis to the beginning of discovery okay and then if you type in uh, wo65 wo do i have to do a slash no a, you can do a space if you like but wo65 uh, and then if you just hit search okay right, right okay there you are printed annual army lists now okay. if you if you click on go right into the the the, the just, that's it if you click on that that opens up the series and it tells you um, about what it is. Now, if you if you look at the description there, it says WS65, it tells you what these are, it tells you that it covers 1754 to 1879. Okay. So if you wanted to, say if you wanted to look for an army list for a particular year, if you just put in uh, where it says at the top where it's got a date range, if you just yeah. put in a date, oh, I'm not sure if... no name, yeah. Okay. No, because this, this you know, so just just put in a a, a year. So um, put in 1875. Okay, I'm doing that. Okay. And this is an example to show us how to get into right. something to, known uh, as a digital microfilm project. That's right. Item. Yeah. Now, if you hit search, I'm not sure if you need to put two two years in, but try it and see what happens. Okay. Okay. There you go. So, printed annual army lists. Uh, that looks. That one will, yeah, that one will do. Yeah, that's okay. it. And now, if you click on that, mm -hmm. printed army list. Now, this is, you see, you can order it, and it says it's free, which it is. Yes. And it also, it says add to basket. Now, yes. this is because you have to go pretend shopping for it, because it's the only way we can deliver um, free stuff. Otherwise, we'd have to have two separate systems. So, if you add that to your basket, okay. Now, we might not be able to get all of this done, sort of, because uh, it's, it's big. In, but, well. but if you if you go if you if you add it to your basket and then, um, oh, I have to sign in again. Yeah. Oh, because this oh. is when I'm sitting at work, I can just go click, 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 because right. I'm in the building and it downloads instantly. But um, okay, it's added to my okay. basket. Where is right, my ah, basket? Right. Okay. Now continue to basket. It says. Oh yeah. So click. Okay. And it's probably going to ask you to log in again, Pat. Yeah, th although this and is then, the national And you see, this is where it's asking you, there's your oh, order. It's going to okay. cost you zero. So you go to checkout. Okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. And, and then you have to enter your... Now, this is why this would take take a while, so it might not work doing it live. But okay. if you, you put your email address in there... And then you have to accept the terms and conditions. Okay. It helps about if that. I can type. Murder fear <laughs> MY. Okay. I accept. Submit right. Order. And then submit order. Now, what would then happen? And I'm not can't remember if it's instant or not. But you Download should now. Oh, you should be able to do that now. And I, it expires on Thursday, July yeah. 28th. Right, so but once you've yeah. downloaded it, you can keep it. So if this works, this will be quite good to show people. So yeah. if you download it now. 
they're quite big files because yeah. this is a whole volume of the army list. Yeah. But if we can get this done without it taking a month of Sundays, it will be nice to show people. But okay. that's what you do. You go shopping and it says, looks like it's going to charge you, but it's going to charge you a big fat zero. So don't so, worry. Yeah, so you, 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 while, you will get it. While it's downloading, yeah. uh, Cousin Russ, I would like you to pick somebody, one of our attendees here, to receive a copy of Ancestor. Oh, there's the file. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I have pretty good internet access. Yeah, uh, I pay you for plainly have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now it's starting to download. It says four minutes. But that'll give us time to do a few um, housekeeping things. This is incredible. First of all, our um, can somebody mute? I'm hearing a f uh, feedback. It's coming from Audrey. Oh, okay. Sorry, First of yeah. all, we have our incredible syllabus, which, um, Claire, have you added that new thing, or are you going to do it? I will add the new thing. I've written a note. After we're done here, I'll add it. Okay, so in a couple hours when I... Uh, tell the rest of the world that this archive version has gone live. Remember, it's got the research log form. And just because it's only one line thick doesn't mean you can't add <laughs> quite a bit and wrap the text. They still have that ability to, uh, to wrap text. Here it is, text wrapping. Ah, it's already here. That wasn't four minutes. Wow, we're going to look at that, that was in quick. a minute. Yeah. Another housekeeping thing to remind you of. Uh, in our um, at Dear Myrtle at hangouts.deermyrtle.com, under archives, there's your British and Irish military. There are each one of our sessions in order, with the um, conversation and the links. This unified chat. It the reason they call it unified chat is because it's stuck together with this video. If you look at it on YouTube, you don't get this. But I'm getting good at reminding people uh, over on YouTube, which is where everything is basically archived, to come over here so they can get all these links. So if you want to come back, because this was like your first view of British and Irish military records, it's here. And it's under archives and just scroll your mouse down. There's all our other events and things that we do, but this is for our British and Irish, so that's one more housekeeping thing. Um, Cousin Russ, have you made a decision as to who gets a copy of Ancestral Trails? Nancy. Hey. Okay, so Nancy, please send an email to me. I'll send it to you here. And I can't do this if you don't send me an email. Um, uh, Nancy Chateau. I know I probably didn't spell it right. Um, you're going to um, receive a copy. Uh, you have to have a uh, U.S. or Canada um, legal address um, so I can send it from my remote offices at Amazon.com. If you're in, if you're in another country. I will send you, because I know like they have a, a UK version of Amazon, I'll send you a gift card. But in uh, her case, in Nancy's case, uh, if she's US or Canada, I can send this directly. So it's good. Uh, and we, t at the top of the hour, said, yep, this is a pretty good comprehensive um, guide to doing research uh, in the UK. Okay, shall we look at our uh, record thing? I would I say so. On? Let's close by looking at what we've been able to get for free. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Please thank all of those at the National Archives, that's for sure. All right, so it looks like I'm looking at microfilm, doesn't it? Oh, very good. Okay, so I'm just going to go this way. There's page one. Yeah, it is from microfilm. Yeah, yeah. Again, that that's why we if we'd got stuff that was already on microfilm and we weren't going to do anything fancy with it, we just run it through the big bad scanner, turned it into a huge PDF, and there it is. Yeah. And you can see that that's it's the printed army list. Okay, just but, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm getting there. I wanted to zoom in, but I think I zoomed in too much. Let me just try 150 percent. That'll probably be fine. So yeah. I'm navigating. I'm so used to Ancestry where you can 
hold on to the middle portion of a page and move it around, but I'm doing well with these little scroll bars across the bottom. So let's look at, um, if my uh, last name was side bottom, I'd change my name. <laughs> oh, there's some handwritten things. Mm, yeah. uh, well, this, this is the beauty of this. It's When you see a normal army list, it's just a printed book. With this one, you've got the printed pages, but on the opposite page to yes. that, the, the, the handwritten one, where they did the updates through the year. And you can oh. see where you've got names there that are crossed out. Now, the printing would be as it stood when the book was printed. But throughout the year, people would die, be promoted, go on half pay, join you know, the, as an yeah, ensign. Yeah, like here's a half they, pay guy. Yeah. And they would be written in. So all the updates throughout the year are these crossings out and write-ins, and then the manuscript editions usually on the other page. Oh, so OK, there's the opposite page. Whoa. So the, so the army list is great, but this version of the army list which is free is just brilliant. I mean, I'm not a military historian. And the, the very first appearance of the, the Duke of Wellington, the really famous one, the very first appearance in the army list is in, the, is in one of these in the year when he's first commissioned. Wow. And wow. you can see him being written in. Yeah. Um, wow. And uh, although his name was Arthur Wellesley, he appears as Arthur Wesley in that first one, which yeah. just shows you that even if you're really posh, your surname does get spelled differently. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. So, so that's incredible. Wow. So okay. that, I, I think it's wonderful. There's lots and lots of other free stuff. And I, I said I sent Claire the, a link and I told her which were the ones, which are the best ones for military. But there's lots of <coughs> other stuff there which is not military and there are lots of stuff which isn't family history at all. But if anything, there's that digital microfilm landing page gives a list of everything that, that we've got digital okay. microfilm for. We're out of memory. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's a... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't get locked up or out or anything like that because that's an incredible book. And okay. that's now yours to keep. <laughs> yes, it is. So, you, can, you, uh, can, you can save that now. Do I want to save them? Yes. Okay. It's read only, so I have to give it a new name. Okay, and I d I'll put it on my desktop. Yeah, you can worry about it later. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we've closed that, I think, so I'll probably get some um, extra memory here. So what an incredible series we've had. Congratulations to Nancy for winning the book. Thank you to uh, Audrey for being so generous running home after work and uh, <laughs> so that you could tune in and share things. Just I mean this is stuff you just know off the cuff about the particular use of things. Um, Claire, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for creating our um, syllabus and uh, providing those links and the amount of research that you've done and uh, the sharing of your expertise. We have something from the community, Russ, and then I think we need to wrap this baby up. John asks, is there a Navy equivalent? Of what we oh, just the, looked the, at? Yeah. There, there is, but there isn't such a good version online. There are some bits of the Navy list online, but you get exactly, you know, it's exactly the same format um, and just not online. Yeah, yet. yeah, and so, well, so I think some of the earlier volumes, because these are really old books, it might even be worth looking on things like the Internet Archive and Google Books, because you might find an odd volume there. Uh, but the, you get exactly the same kind of record for the Army and for the Navy, and of course, much more recently, there's an Air Force list as well. Um, okay, so yeah. for people who, uh, I think people know how to get to the uh, Google Books. Do you want to mute yourself? Audrey getting that Sorry. feedback. But let me give you the link here to the Internet Archive. That's something that um, people are not as familiar with. Um, the Internet Archive. I'm typing. There you go, folks. And of course, uh, books.google.com.
Excellent. You're getting lots of kudos from people in the um, viewing audience. Thank you for your feedback too, folks. Uh, and um, Nancy, don't forget to write to me so that I can send you that book. I want to do it right now. Just um, one be away one from last thing desk. before you go off. Yes. On the National Archive page, um, Audrey provided us with some links for blogs and for podcasts and stuff. If you could just, I put a red um, arrow, just wanted to point that out. Oh. Okay, All the I'll work go that there. The National Archives is doing to help us. They're adding, they've added some wonderful things, the resources up at the top. There's some podcasts and webinars, and oh, there's yes. also some, and so we've got the links for those, courtesy of of Audrey providing us. And those are also on family history slash military records. So just so people know that the subject matter is pertinent to what we're talking about today. All right, so that's very, very important. Um, Can I just say something else about those? <laughs> yes. Well, the, the link, the links I sent were for the the stuff that's already there, the podcasts and uh, webinars. But for the ones that are coming up, I found the where, okay. where to find this now. Could you want to do another quick live demo? National Archives website. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to na uh, National Archives website, the, the home page. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. Let me change Go the on. camera. Yep. And if you sc scroll down a bit to where it says what's on, and if you click on the words what's on. What's on. Okay, that's that's, a, that's apparently a British phrase. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just just you know, if you if you want to research our records, you have to get with our culture and get the language. Yes, now, we do. This is all, all the upcoming events. Now, we've got all sorts of things. We've got they're mainly on-site things, but where we've got a webinar and it says very clearly online event and oh look Monday the 11th of July webinar using discovery for family history that's going to be me folks um, right. wow. okay. and and this is just like any other hangout or webinar where you register in advance yeah, you register yeah and um, if uh, yeah, so feel free the, the time it's about a couple of hours earlier than this is so America's awake. So um, you know, we, <laughs> well, we, we do we do try to pitch things and put them on in what's early evening for us, because it gets you know the it gets the maximum. Otherwise, it's hard. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do have a problem with Australia. Sorry there, but because oh. it's really <laughs> difficult to get something when, that suits them. But um, it, most of our webinars are on at what is 6 p.m. for us, and that's. Um, Excellent. So usually the next few things are online, but it's worth just keeping an eye on that. We, we're, I'm doing that one. That one's on on the the 9th of August and the the 30th of September as well. Okay. Well, uh, well, I'm I'm not going to be doing the 30th of September one because. Uh, um, oh no, I I might be in Canada then, so I'm not sure about ah, that. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm also doing one on the 19th of August, which is a Friday, about birth, marriage, and death records in the National Archives. Yes. And I've got two of my colleagues are doing ones. Uh, Wednesday, the 27th of July, there's one about naturalization and citizenship records. Now, do you notice there's a difference, folks, between what's an online event and this is not an online event, the one yeah. on Thursday. Um, yeah. And uh, so be... Um, you know, of course, with uh, the price of uh, the comparison of the dollar to the to your your own dollars, yeah, you, I should yes. come over now, Audrey. <laughs> this is definitely the time to do it. <laughs> while while the pound continues to sink like a stone. Oh, um, I know. I'm so sorry. So <laughs> sorry. Like, I yeah. hear you. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well chock full of information once again I've learned so much I cannot thank you enough and cousin Russ thank you for bringing in the comments today as usual uh, and uh, I guess that there's nothing left to say but I'm dear Myrtle your friend in genealogy happy family tree climbing everybody that's a wrap <laughs>